has had an incredible career uh, as, a, as a doctor in applied economics from Clemson, uh, a long and distinguished career in public service. Um, she was a Democratic nominee for Congress, uh, and she has served this community and served our state in a variety of capacities uh, with the, the diversity initiatives at Furman. She's a former board member of the United Way of South Carolina. She was on the board of the Palmetto Works Community Development Corporation. She's been a teacher, a professor, college president, and in Georgia, she was a member of the legisla legislature and city council. So she is uniquely qualified, uniquely qualified to help us move South Carolina from the old South Carolina, the broken, the corrupt, the dysfunctional government that we have today, to a new South Carolina that's open to everybody, where there's opportunity abounds, where there's open and fair and honest government. And so with that, I'd just like to, to, to say to Gloria, thank you, this is your turf, this is your town, uh, and, you, and it's a little strange for me to be introducing you here uh, because they know you a lot better than me. So anyway, I'll turn it over to you, Gloria. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. And good morning, Orie County. Good morning. It's, it's such a privilege and pleasure for me to be here. Uh, this morning to uh, share this podium with Phil Noble. Thank you, Phil. I'm honored to serve as your running mate, uh, as Lieutenant Governor for the state of South Carolina. Uh, thank you for choosing me from among uh, an outstanding field of candidates. Uh, Phil and I are friends, and, and we go back some six or seven years, but that's not why I accepted uh, the offer to be on his ticket as his Lieutenant Governor. I'm honored because Phil's campaign reflects his lifelong commitment to standing up for our democratic values and fighting for big change, real reform right now. So what are, the, what are some of those democratic values that Phil and I stand for? We believe in equal opportunity for all and privileges for none. Government of for and by the people, not for the special interests, and a right of every working family to a living, self-sufficient wage. Phil stands with the 2.4 million South Carolina women who will not be silenced and are demanding equal pay for equal work. Phil knows that our state is in desperate need of sustainable economic development, particularly in our rural areas where there are challenges with issues pertaining to our schools, infrastructure, healthcare, broadband, transportation, and even access to, to the basic necessities of life. Those things are woefully inadequate in most of our rural communities. Phil has a vision for South Carolina, for a new South Carolina where state government is reformed from the top to the bottom, where we can create an environment where every single citizen can work to uh, achieve their, the future that they see for themselves and their family. And the role of state government is to make sure that there's a, a, an equal playing field for all families. So the question for us this election cycle is similar to the one that was raised back in 1976 when my Shiro, the late Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, addressed the National Democratic Convention. And she posed this question. Are we to be one people bound together by a common spirit, sharing a common endeavor, or will we become a divided nation? And anyone can see, based on the national conversation that we are heading in the direction of being a divided nation. So her words were indeed prophetic. In closing, I'd like to paraphrase, paraphrase those comments by Congresswoman Barbara Jordan and ask of South Carolinians, are we to be one people bound together by a common spirit, the spirit that is reflected in the state model that, that says, while I breathe, I hope, 
In other words, as long as I'm breathing, there's hope? And will we share a common endeavor that was specified in our founding documents that each person should be given the opportunity to have life, liberty, and to pursue happiness? Or will we be a divided state again? I believe with Phil Noble as governor, we can lead this nation as well as the state in what it means to form a more perfect union. And as for me and my community, we stand with Phil for big change, real reform right now. Thank you. It is, I think, fitting that we have this announcement today, which was the, the day after the last day of the legislature. And if you, if you look at what's happening with our state government, with the legislature, and the other candidates for governor and lieutenant governor, and Gloria and myself, there could not be a clear, bigger difference. All the other candidates, for governor and lieutenant governor on the Democratic side, they're all part of the state house. They're all legislators or corporate lawyers with their lobbyists. They are what's wrong with South Carolina state government. Perfectly nice people. But what their values, what they have done, their background, it's all about the mess that we're in in Columbia. Gloria and I are not in state government. Neither one of us have ever been in state government. I'm a business guy. I started lots of nonprofit organizations. Gloria is a, is a professor, a teacher, an economist. Could not be a greater difference between who we are and who they are. And that's reflected, I think, in the fact that on the very last day of the leg uh, legislature, they did not pass a bill to deal with the biggest utility crisis this state has ever seen. And we need to send them a message that says, no, that's not acceptable. You must deal with the basic issues facing our state. They did not pass a single bill dealing with gun reform. We in this state have got to stand up to the NRA. We can be a state where our children and our communities are safe, but only if we stand up to the NRA. And we need to send them a message. They must do this. This is what we've got to do as a state. The legislature ended with never passing a significant ethics reform bill to deal with the corruption that is infecting our state house. And we're here to send them a message that says, no, we can have decent, honest government. We must have decent, honest government. And on and on, you talk about freedom of information for an open government ethics legislation that extends not just to the le legislature, but the boards and commissions in the rest of the state. Equal pay for equal work. All of these things. We need to send them a message that we want a new South Carolina. We want a different South Carolina. And we can have it. And we deserve it. And that's what this campaign is all about. It's a really clear choice between the state house crowd, more the same, the old South Carolina or a new South Carolina with different leaders, different people that opens the doors to bring people in instead of shutting people out. That says, come as opposed to stay away, we're in charge. It's basically the system of plantation politics, which has crippled our state, where the folks get together in the state house, Democrats and Republicans, and they cut deals. They look after themselves and their cronies, and they say to the rest of us, this is the way it is, tough luck. We've got to end plantation politics in South Carolina. We deserve it. We can do great things. We can have great triumphs again when we first deal with the corruption in the state. And so that's what this campaign's about. That's why we're here. That's what Gloria and I represent. And that's what I think the future of this state needs. And I think that's what people are saying. That's the message that people want to send. Send them a message. Tell them we want a new South Carolina.